Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and today it's once again back to taboo conspiracies, what it means to be a flat earther, and I sure hope that he finally answers the question in this part of the video. I mean, we're already two thirds of the way into the video and he still hasn't answered the question himself, so surely it's coming up, right? Now that we've covered much of what a ball earther believes, not really, you've just strawmanned the globe model a whole lot and said that it was stupid without providing any reason as to why you think that it's stupid. I believe that's what's called an ad hom. What does a flat earther believe? I can't speak for everyone, but this is what I believe as a flat earther. Now this seems like it's going to be the interesting part of the video. I haven't actually watched this part of the video yet, so it's going to be interesting what he actually says. Based on all of the evidence, I believe the earth is a flat and motionless plane because all reasonable and objective tests that you can perform indicate the Earth is flat and stationary. Except for when, you know, they uh, don't, which unfortunately happens to be most of the time. These tests are repeatable, observable, and falsifiable by anyone. Oh, I absolutely agree with part of that, the repeatability part. I'm going to get to the falsifiable part in a bit, but let's start with the repeatability part. So Nathan Oakley, a while back, said about the angle of attack, and then he made a video where he showed something disappearing bottom up, and he said that it was due to the angle of attack. So Ranty went ahead and repeated it, and oh, he found that there was no such thing as the angle of attack at a racetrack. And the whole idea behind the angle of attack was because Ranty went ahead and tried to prove the flat earth by filming a boat going over the horizon. And this is where I get to the idea that flat earth is falsifiable because it's not really. You ask any flat earther why boats disappear bottom first over the horizon and I guarantee you that most of them will say perspective. But the problem is, is that when flat earthers say perspective, they're saying that objects should disappear bottom first over the horizon on a flat earth without explaining why and without giving any numbers that can lead us to falsify that claim. You see, the globe has numbers for everything, including stuff like atmospheric refraction, which is why you might sometimes see further than you'd normally expect. Now, all a flat earther really has to do if they want to disprove atmospheric refraction being why we see further than we'd expect is to take temperature readings as well as taking a photo rather than just being like, Oh, there's a photo of oil, bendy oil rigs in, over there. The, the earth is flat. No presuppositions, no pseudoscience dogma, and no appeals to authority figures and conformity. Well, I'd say that a big presupposition of flat earth is that the sun can disappear over the horizon without being physically obstructed by the horizon. And also, I don't need authority figures to tell me that earth is a globe. I can figure that one out for myself. Hey, buddy, how you doing? I'm doing good. Um, uh, I've just got a question for you. Uh, can you see the sun outside where you are? Let me just go and have a look. Uh, open window. Okay. No, I just, I just want to know if you can see the sun outside, that's all. Oh yeah, yeah, because see the sun outside. Okay, yeah. Um, are you sure that's the sun, not Nibiru or anything? <laughs> not Nibiru. It could be Nibiru. It could be, it could be somebody painted a big yellow dot <laughs> on the dome and it's just like slowly pushing the blob of paint around to make it look like it's moving. Simply stated, the evidence supporting a flat and stationary Earth far outweighs the evidence of a whirling twirling ball flying through the vacuum of space. That depends on A, what you classify as evidence, and B, if you ignore all the evidence for the globe, because that seems to be what a lot of flat earthers do. As shown now by hundreds of videos and photographs, there is no measurable curvature, even though the curvature should be easily detectable with modern instruments and experienced in everyday life. Although, maybe ask Duranism about that, because uh, I don't know if you remember that Flat Earth documentary where he ooh, showed that the Earth is curved right at the end, didn't he? 
Or there's one of my personal favourites, which is this video here, which was uploaded to Jiranism's channel at one point, which intended to show no curve to the horizon, but as you can see, it, it does. Even at heights more than 121,000 feet, there's no curvature, and that belies everything we've been shown and told since we were children. I believe that geometric bulges of the ball earth cannot disappear and relocate to present a false flat earth and let us see or detect objects that should be hidden by mountains of curvature. But what would Taboo Conspiracy say about the horizon relocating to create a false globe earth, as he would put it? Is this... are we just going to ignore that? I believe the earth is not in space and that space, at least as it's widely understood, is fake. Space has been faked by NASA and all of the other fraudulent space agencies and their corporate subsidiaries, as shown by all the wires, ridiculous toy models, space bubbles, and many CGI mistakes. Well, quite a few of the times when Flat Earthers quote CGI mistakes, it's something that's very easily explained, or where they're looking for something when there may not be anything there. With the clip that he showed, for example, it could be as something as simple as a video glitch, but... I actually have no idea where that's from because I did try and find the source video but surprisingly, or unsurprisingly actually, I was unable to find it. Even in the comments of the original video there were quite a few people asking for a source. Even flat earthers were asking for a source but no source was provided. It's rather interesting. I believe the Apollo moon missions, which ended 48 years ago, were poorly faked with 1960s movie props, wires, models, paintings, and obvious movie backdrops. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. If you believe that the moon landings were fake, then fake your own moon landings using nothing but technology available back in the 1960s. Can you do it? I don't think you'd be able to. Astronauts are nothing more than poor actors who lie continually and should not be venerated by children. Are we going to get any evidence of that claim, or is it just a claim without evidence that can be dismissed without evidence? I believe that if NASA and their subsidiaries faked any of it, as the clear evidence shows, then we can rightfully assume that they fake all of it, which they do. That is the logical and right approach. Well, actually, that is a logical fallacy, the fallacy of composition to be exact, because you're saying that because something is true for part of it, then it must be true for the whole, which doesn't necessarily follow. It'd be like saying that because the government has told the truth, therefore the government always tells the truth, which of course is just flat out wrong. The government has lied before. I believe that it's impossible for a pressurized atmosphere to exist next to the unbelievably powerful vacuum of space. Vacuums aren't powerful. When will Flat Earthers understand that vacuums don't suck? I believe that it's okay to theorize and speculate, but theories and speculations do not constitute fact, but are beliefs, and should never be stated as fact. Well, it's a good thing then that scientific theories have a lot of evidence to back them up, like germ theory. Wait, do Flat Earthers believe in germ theory? I believe in a humble, true science based on the actual scientific method, which includes an independent variable that can be manipulated to change the dependent variable. Well, firstly, you're wrong about needing to manipulate the independent variable. Sometimes the independent variable is something that exists and just changes, like time. For example, if my hypothesis is that every 20 minutes the amount of bacteria that I've got on a petri dish will double, then my independent variable there is time. It can't really be anything else. I also notice how on the graphic you've got there that the independent variable must be the cause, when this is not true, it can just be something that influences the dependent variable. And I certainly do not believe in dogmatic, top-down narratives. True science should welcome all questions and challenges. That's rather ironic considering that Flat Earthers have this really strict definition of the scientific method. And if something doesn't follow their strict definition of the scientific method, then it's not science. Which is rather dogmatic in my opinion. 
How about questioning why the scientific method is the way that it is? I mean, you should be able to question anything, right? Because so much of science is now based on nothing but phony stories, blunders, and dogma, we must give science and academia a major overhaul. Well, yeah, science does have its problems. Like, one of the issues of science is that it's not communicated to the public by scientists. It's often sensationalized by the media before it's relayed to the public. And that is a problem. There's also the problem of sometimes peer review just doesn't work. And sometimes scientists will p-hack to try and get particular results that they want. These are real problems with science. And believing that the Earth is flat isn't going to fix any of that. I do not believe in groupthink, but I believe in our own God-given individual intuition, reason, and logic. Again, that's rather ironic considering that there are a lot of flat earthers that do engage in groupthink, mostly Nathan Oakley's community. I believe every person must think for themselves, conduct their own objective research, and reach their own rational conclusions based on demonstrable evidence, and you'll never hear a ball earther tell you the same. Well, I actually do think that people should think for themselves. This may come as a shock to flat earthers, but I'm not in favour of everyone just going with the status quo, because that can be pretty bad sometimes. What I disagree with, however, is this idea that you've got to test everything out for yourself. Because I could say that I don't believe that superconductors are real. And any time that you see uh, quantum levitation using type 2 superconductors, that that is just CGI or fake. Now, I could order a type 2 superconductor off of the internet, as well as some liquid nitrogen and some magnets. But why would I? That costs money. I'm perfectly content seeing multiple YouTube videos from multiple people showing quantum levitation using type 2 superconductors. I don't think that just because I haven't done it myself that it is fake. I believe that institutionalized conformity is destroying humanity. Is he saying that humanity is being destroyed by people believing the globe? Because I don't think that's the case. And the evidence of our idiocracy is unfortunately becoming clearer every day. Yeah, I can, I can agree with that because you've got flat earthers, you've got... 5G nutters, you've got COVID yet, so yeah, um, Taboo Conspiracy has hit the nail on the head with that one. Finally, I believe in Jesus Christ. In fact, I love Christianity and the Bible. Wasn't there something that you said earlier about things that you believe needing to be falsifiable and repeatable? I don't think that Christianity quite fits that. In conclusion, I can only advise what every Christian should know. And that is, prove all things, hold fast, that which is good. Can you prove that there is a God, though? Because I haven't seen any good evidence that a God exists. May God bless you all in your pursuit of and sharing his truth. Merry Christmas. Oh, that video ended quicker than I expected because the rest is just a song. So I guess we can say, what did we learn here today? For me, I didn't actually learn that much because... There wasn't much to learn from this video. I did learn from cats, though, that the sun over in England might actually be Nibiru, but uh, that's yet to be confirmed. Now, some people watching this that may not have known this already may have learnt that Flat Earth isn't about what you believe about the shape of the Earth, it's what you don't believe about the shape of the Earth. Most of what Taboo Conspiracy was saying was not the Earth is flat and here's why, it was more the Earth is not a globe, and here's why I think that. And that was actually kind of disappointing, because I was hoping in this video there would be some Flat Earth claims that I'd be able to debunk, but once again, I am disappointed. But am I surprised? Not really. But anyway, I've finally gotten through that video, and it did take me a while to get through that video, so I'm very surprised that another YouTuber like Simon Dan didn't come along and make a response to this video as well. Because I'm sure that Simon Dan would make a brilliant response, and if he were to make a response, I'd most certainly link it in a card up there. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you liked that video. Make sure you hit the bell notification as well so that you get notified of when I post new videos. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. 
What Jesus, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Jane Spade, Wolfie Mori, The Friendly Antinatalist, Graymore Ghost, and Kid Vicious. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching. And you know, if Simon and Dan were to make the same video that I did, we most certainly wouldn't be using the same sort of thumbnail layout, because that would look a little bit suspicious, I'd say.